Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm gonna show you how to build this. This is a rain gutter grow system made of only three component materials. A float valve at one end, the gutter itself, and the wicks that supply water and nutrients to the plants. This is the combination of years of work, building ideas upon ideas, working in the direction towards liberating the rain gutter grow system into a simple, practically effective, and affordable way of growing your own food at home. I'll also be showing you how I set it up and plant our new growers pot alternative onto this system. So today we're reimagining the rain gutter grow system. We are using only three things. The materials you'll need are wicks, a float valve, and a PVC downpipe. Now, these are available in the US and in Australia. There are versions in Europe as well, which are used for fence posts. So those are the materials we'll be using. We will, however, be using some tools. I'll be using a clamp, a couple of pieces of wood that kind of match up with the sizing of the downpipe. I'll be using a heat gun. This was really cheap. I think it was like 15 or 20 bucks. I'll be using a drill with the appropriate hole size for the float valve and a cutting implement. This is a cutoff tool. It is perfect for what I do all the time. It's essentially an angle grinder that's a bit more ergonomic. It's very expensive. So you can use a jigsaw in its place or an angle grinder, a Dremel or a rotary tool. Whatever you can do a cut on a piece of plastic with, you can use. A multi-tool would work absolutely fine as well. So we've used a heat gun before to bend plastics and I want to implement that idea on the end of our rain gutter grow system so that we do not need to use end caps. Now this is going to alleviate all of the problems that are associated with purchasing end caps for pipes that don't have end caps. Uh, I don't know why they don't make end caps for them. So to start with, we are just going to clamp our pieces of wood in place either side of our plastic. So I'm just gonna clamp it, not too tight. I don't wanna buckle the channel. I foresee this part getting in the way. So when it comes up, I don't really want this section here. So I'm gonna take that out first. And then it's gonna make it easier for me to heat up as well. So it's nice and melted now. Hopefully we've melted that enough that we can fold it in. It'd be good to have another piece of wood to just sort of clamp at the back there. What I can do is we can bring this clamp behind, make sure it's upright and flat and then clamp. And that's going to hold our end in place rather nicely actually. I'm pretty happy with that. And once it's cooled down, we can undo our clamps like so. The end is sealed. Um, to tidy that up, I actually think a multi-tool is probably the best tool for this job. Like that. You can almost certainly do a better job than me. And then we're just gonna put a hole in the back end of it. We're gonna measure up our float valve. So it's gonna be about that. And we'll just mark out what we wanna cut. And you're either happy with that and these aren't getting in the way, or we can heat this up again so that we can fold these corners round and get them out of the way of our float. Bend these corners. Once you're happy that that's nice and firm, we can undo our clamps. And we have a functional end to the rain gutter grow system with zero parts. It's all essentially origami. <laughs> we can add in our float valve like so. You just adjust your float valve. Look at that. Not a cent more than the pipe cost. Now it takes a bit more time than the 3D printed version, but if you're willing to spend that time, it's free. Well, it costs the pipe, but it's free. This is a free end. And you can do the same with the other end. We just seal it exactly the same way. 
except there's less fiddling. We're not even going to bother cutting it. And once it's hardened, undo the clamps and we have a hard end, which is now completely sealed. Okay, so I'm not done. That is just the beginning because now I'm going to show you how you can modify this to create grow spikes. What we need to do first is figure out our plant spacing. Let's see, this system is going to have potatoes. Bags are 300 wide. Okay, so the spacing is going to be 100 mil. It's gonna work my way back from here every 400. The idea behind this, let me show you. This is a 3D printable grow spike. When you wick it up and you drill a hole in these style of systems, the wick will wick water up into a bag or pot that you place over the top of this device. To make this available to the wider audience and the wider public, I was struggling with ideas about how to implement this in a manner that required no 3D print um, and was inexpensive, like just free, ideally. So this is the idea and I am really excited to show it to you. From the place in the pipe that I have marked out, we're gonna have one wick per bag. The length of the wick wedge is about 100 mil. So I'm gonna measure 100 mil and I'm just gonna trace the outline of this ruler because it's about the size that I want the spikes to be. We'll make a point. Into that, we're going to drill some holes. This is a six millimeter drill bit. We are going to put two holes in the top of the spike. I'm gonna go a bit bigger than that. That was an eight millimeter hole. So I'm just gonna cut this. And we have our grow spike, but we need to heat it up. If we heat it up, and we bend it because if we bend it, it's gonna give some rigidity to the plastic. So bend it like this. There we go. And as you can see, we have a grow spike. And what we're gonna do here is we're just going to feed our wicking fabric through it and it allows you to puncture a bag over the top of it with nothing but the pipe itself. Look at that. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with myself, come on. <laughs> the simplest ideas are the best ideas, I reckon. I'm gonna go and make the rest of them. And you can obviously play around with what works best. I think this is a really good starting point because you can see the bag will be punctured and the wick will sort of slide into place and, and then wick out from each side. I, I like this, I, I think we're gonna go with this. Now, did I just make a bunch of my 3D prints obsolete? Yes, but I don't care. <laughs> and we can go along and wick up the system. I have used cotton sash with some success in the past. However, the best wicking material is something called Omeric. I'll link it below and it is superior to cotton sash. I don't know what it's made of, but it just works. So I recommend that. Um, I'll link it in the description. So we just literally like so. And <laughs> there we have our whole gutter wicked up and ready for setup and planting. So we can take it outside now. I'm gonna give it a quick washout. And we can set it up here. Now these are my cheap alternative to growers pots. And if you haven't seen that video, it's a video explaining how you can make cheap pots out of LDPE virgin plastic so that you can make pots for about 15 and a half cents each. In that video I use, this is 350 millimeter plastic rolls. But as you can see here, this is the 500 millimeter plastic roll. And it holds about 30 liters of material, or at least I have got 30 liters in these, and the 350 millimeter roll holds 15 liters of material. So it's about double the size. So these are the potato bags. I've already set them up and we will be doing a complete potato grow video. For now, I'm just gonna move them out of the way. To set this system up, all I'm gonna do is lay it down on the ground and make sure that the ground's level. 
Now that's level, fantastic. We wanna lay down a piece of timber on either side. I don't really want these potato bags sagging on either side. It is optional, you could dig this into the ground and make it cheaper, but I've got the wood around anyway. I'm not using massive slabs this time, I'm just gonna use these pieces of timber to connect up our garden hose, which is gonna run all the way up to our reservoir of hydroponic nutrient, we are going to use, this is a BSP to 13 millimeter barb, and I'll just be sealing it with plumber's tape so that it doesn't leak. Now, before we actually do anything, there's a little thing inside that stops. It's meant to act like a filter of sorts, but all it ends up doing is getting clogged with algae. So we just pull that out and it will only cause you trouble and we can add on our BSP fitting, connect up our hose, like so, and turn on the water up the other end. That should start filling. You can hear the air escaping. There it goes. <laughs> That's got some nice pressure too. And we'll wait for that to fill. Okay, so what I have noticed is because of the way that I've folded these back together, there is a little bit of leakage out of the side here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of silicon and just seal that up um, so that it doesn't leak like that. I would recommend that you silicon this up as well if you're gonna do that second fold back. The other end doesn't need to be siliconed because we didn't do that second fold. That second fold brings the the top of the fold down about halfway down the channel, which I didn't realize. Once you're happy that your system doesn't leak, we can add in the grow bags. It's super simple. Now I have labeled these potatoes. We just drop them onto the system. Here goes. <laughs> that was great. Oh, it's working fantastically. Oh, oh, that one bent. Why'd that bend? Got there eventually. Okay, so the bending actually gives them some rigidity. I, I just had a problem with one of them bending rather than piercing. If you're having trouble, I think you can extend this bend all the way up, increase the rigidity if you do have the issue I just had. I've only had the issue once though and all the rest are fine. <laughs> there we go. For me, this is kind of the product of a few years of work, developing new ways of supplying water and nutrients to plants and combining different ideas and elements into a single system. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. I'll put a few links at the end of the videos about all the individual ideas that tied together to make this system. And you can check those out individually if you wanna know any more about those individual elements. Happy hydroponicking and I will see you next time on Who Chose. Mm. Spring is coming and as you can tell, I am quite excited for it. We are going to have a big year of growing ahead of us. Get subscribed and hit that like button to see more. <laughs>